Hello, everybody. I can see people piling in now. I'm just going to give it a minute for everyone to join and then I will introduce myself. Hope everyone is having a lovely Tuesday evening. Am I so Irish that I'm going to say there's a grand stretch out there? <laughs> I'll just give it two more minutes. What I'm going to do is I'll share my screen in a second so that you can see my hand up close when we get started on the demo. Oh, lots of people. Hello, everybody. I'm going to give it just a one minute pass to make sure everybody has time to come in. And what I will say is there's a Q&A section at the bottom, I think, where you will be able to ask me questions throughout. So please feel free, pop your questions in there. I'll check it throughout and make sure that not only am I answering them at the end, but that if I can show you visually the answer to your question, I know that can be really beneficial. So definitely keep your questions coming. And if there's anything specific, just let me know. I see somebody's hand is raised. I don't think that I can answer your question that way. So pop it into the little Q&A, type it in for me so that I can answer it that way. Um, okay, the numbers are slowing down. So I think everybody might be here. So anyway, hello everyone. My name is Pamela Laird. I'm absolutely delighted to be here with 14 Day Manny. Again, this is the second in the Masterclass series and I'm thrilled. This time it's about Builder Gel. And honestly, the questions were flooded at the last Masterclass all about how to use Builder Gel. And I am so ready to give you my top tips. We didn't have any time the last time to really touch on it properly. And I'm a huge fan. Uh, so I'm delighted to be able to do a proper demo and give you all of my tips and tricks. And like I said, I see a few more people coming. Pop your questions in the Q&A because I want to make this as interactive as possible and answer what you guys really want to know and make it as easy for you guys to use at home. Um, and I guess for a lot of people, maybe people don't know what Builder Gel is. You've seen a lot about it. It's extremely viral on social media at the minute it's one of the newest trends when it comes to nails and whether you've heard of it as a builder in a bottle gel or a builder gel essentially they're all the same thing and um, it stands for basically it's a, it's a more flexible version of acrylic or gel but it's also a little bit more softer on the nails than than acrylic would be um and so I think uh, 14 Day Manny's gel polish range, aside from the Builder Gel, is fantastic. But with the Builder Gel alone, you've got over 20 shades. Now, I'm going to be focusing on the shades that come in the Builder Kit, the Starter Kit. And I want to pop it, actually, I'll pop it into the chat if I can, um, that I actually have a discount code. So it's Pamela12 if you do want to pick anything up and that will get you 12% off. Um, and the Builder Gel has everything you need. It's got the lamp, the base and top and the clear color and sorry, the clear builder gel and a color gel. So I'm going to be using both the clear and a color gel today to show you exactly how it works. So let me just share my other camera so that you can see my hand up close. Hopefully this has worked. We'll let that focus for a second. OK, so I'm going to be showing you everything. Now, the last time we touched on a bit of prep, but if any of you weren't in the last webinar, I'm going to be talking very seriously about prep. Prep to me is everything, especially when you are doing them at home. I know a lot of people struggle to get longevity out of them. And I think a lot of times it comes down to the prep that goes into it. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is use the metal pusher here. So this actually has two sides. This is really important. This is going to make sure that there's no living tissue on the nail plate, any cuticle in the way. I'll slide that out of the way. So I'm going to come up here so you can see properly. So I'm going to be using the flat side and I'm going to just push back. This is just going to get rid of any cuticle that's on the natural nail. I'm going to use this side just to make sure that all of it is off the nail plate. And being quite gentle, although we do want to make sure that there's no uh, skin on the nail plate, what you don't want to do is cause any damage to the nail. This is right back here is where your nail is formed. It's called the matrix. And the cuticle actually provides a watertight seal. So it'll prevent any water getting in, any bacteria um, and affecting the actual nail growth itself. So to be gentle with your cuticles. But obviously we do want to make sure that we get the best base possible. Think of it like makeup you don't want to have any leftover makeup on your skin when you're going out if you're prepping it properly or at night so think of it like you're cleansing so you can see there's a lot of cuticle there on this nail I'm going to come up a bit closer so you can see so really getting that out but while being being as gentle as possible 
So that's, I'm going to do that on all of the nails. I kind of have done a few of these and I don't know if you've noticed, but I've got a broken nail. Now I didn't break it on purpose. I promise it actually has been broken. And the builder gel that I've been wearing has been fantastic helping it grow out. But I'm going to show you that builder gel isn't just for adding strength to your nail. Builder gel, you can also lengthen your nail. So if you do get a broken nail, like I have here, how we can repair it, it's magic, honestly. But Builder Gel is fantastic. So whether you're used to wearing shellac or whether you've toyed around with false nails in the past and you can't find something that suits you, this almost suits every nail type, whether you've got an oily nail bed, whether you've got a drier nail bed. I'm going to just do a quick little buff. This is the buffer. You can see it's a much loved buffer. <laughs> but basically what you're going to do is take the shine off. The shine creates a barrier for gel okay so we want all the shine gone from each nail and that will give us the best base possible for the gel to stick to so we're kind of scratching up the nail slightly just the surface we're not going seesaw heavy with the nail file we're really just taking off that shine and any it's always really good to look at it under a light and just make sure that all the shine has gone from the nail plate so you want to go down the side walls and I think with the builder gel you really want to make sure you're happy with your shape. So don't be afraid to go in with um, like a slimmer file like this one here. This is one of my favorites. The 100, 180 is fantastic to use with the builder gel because I'm going to show you, I'm going to make a little mistake and show you what you can do to make your nails perfect at home because we all make mistakes from time to time. But basically you want to go down the side walls here and just make sure you're happy with your shape. And I'm going to do the same with this broken nail here. I hope you can see that it's broken. And just pop that underneath there so you can see. So this one is much shorter than the others. So what I'm going to do is when you want to repair a nail, you really want to take away the edges so that you can fit what's known as a form. So I'm going to be showing you that in a minute. But what I want to do first is really go with the basics. So depending on how you want to use the builder gel, personally, and this is my other hand, it's grown out as you can see. Personally, I love to go for like a color gel, something that I don't have to wear color on top of unless I have to. So the builder gels work both as a color and a strengthener. So I'm going to show you this. So the one you get in the kit is actually called Don't Make Me Blush. So this comes in the starter kit. So we're going to use that one. But first, I'm going to do a little bit of a base prep. As I said before, base for me is everything and, and the prep that goes into the nails is everything for me. So what I'm going to use is a product that doesn't come in the starter kit as far as I know. But if you've got oily nail beds like me, you might want to invest in the primer. The primer will temporarily dehydrate the nail, which is exactly the conditions that the gel builder loves it wants a dehydrated nail temporarily so it can attach properly now if you don't have that that's absolutely fine what you can use is a little bit of the acetone remover that comes in the kits um, and a little cotton pad or the lint-free nail wipes but I'm going to be using the primer because honestly I've noticed such a difference since I started using this so a little quick wipe on the nail gently with that you don't need to use too much and you'll see that start to dry in I hope you can see that guys and um, that will start to dry in. And then your next step is your base coat. So this is the base coat that you would use with your ordinary um, gel polish. So it's the exact same base coat. And what we're going to do is a really, really thin coat. Again, this is just giving us prime base for the gel polish. So I'm going to do a little thin coat of this. And again, if you weren't on my last masterclass, scooping all of the product off the brush especially when it's a brand new bottle is really key for control so you can literally just go back in and scoop up a really small amount just what you need on one side and then you're going to apply a couple of millimeters away from the cuticle line push up slightly and then drag down and what's really important is every layer that you do that you're going to cap that edge so just cap the edge like that and don't be afraid if you do make any mistakes or you hit off the sides, you can use your other nail to scoop around or an orange wood stick. And another thing that's important, while the bottles are solid, they're not see-through, it's very important to angle your lamp away from your product. So what you don't want to do is have the UV light affecting the product inside here. So we're going to give that 30 seconds on the normal heat. And then I'm going to show you the texture of the builder gel is different. OK, it's different than your usual gel polish color. OK, it's a little bit thicker. And the reason that is, is because it adds strength to the nail. So whether you're using it as a base coat for an extra thickness or over your gel polish, you're going to be working with it in a similar way. So it's a little bit different. So bear with me. I'm going to try and show you as detailed as I can. 
So our base coat is cured and we're ready to go. Curing is basically when it goes into the lamp. And one thing to be mindful of is that each layer is sticky. So each layer won't set until you're finished. So don't be worrying. It doesn't mean it's not dry. Once you've cured it in the lamp for the designated time, it'll, it'll remain sticky, but it has cured properly. So the reason that it's sticky is because each layer likes to connect to each other. And so if it's too smooth, the gel won't stick. Okay, so let's get into the texture of this product. So you will see that it is much thicker. You can even see the string there. It's much thicker than your usual gel polish. Again, I'm a firm believer in using as little product as possible. It's much easier to control. So what I like to do is pop my bottle down. I take out my brush slowly so that I'm working with product on one side of the brush, not on both sides. This will help create control. And if you feel like you don't have enough, you can literally go back in, scoop up the product that you need and have it on the tip of the brush. This will just mean that it's so much easier to work with and you'll see why. So there's two ways that you can use a builder gel in the instructions and probably the easiest way is to do two coats. And that's just working nice and smoothly with the product. I'm gonna show you another way if your nails are a little bit longer like mine, just to add a bit more strength. But for now, let's go with the two coats. So what you're gonna do is very similar to the base coat. I'm just gonna push that lamp out of the way. We're going to go placement just a couple of millimeters away from the lap, from the lash line, from the cuticle line and press slightly. OK, now I'm going to do a little swivel here. And what that does is, is it just leaves a bit of product on the nail. And that's what I want. Essentially, you want a small bit of product on your brush to connect to the product on your nail, which will help move the product around. So you don't want to dive in and press your brush in harshly. OK. What you really want to do is gently work. I'm going to try and do it to the side as well, so you can see. Gently work a little string between the product and your brush. Now, what we really want, what makes a great builder gel nail or any nail, is super thin around the cuticle line. So we're going to go gently around the cuticle line. Again, keeping that little string and work around both sides. And we want to kind of flatten it out. We don't want to thick at the cuticle line. Where we really want the strength is in the center there. That's really where it's going to be at its best. It's going to keep the nail strong and it's not going to be too thick. So we're going to keep this little string. I hope you can see that. I'm trying my best. It goes in out of focus. And then gently drag it down the nail. So again, the thickness is mainly staying in the center, but we've got good coverage all over the nail. And again, using the brush to just cap that edge around the free edge of the nail. And check it out on its side. Make sure you're happy with it. I wouldn't overwork the gel. And what I mean by overwork is I wouldn't keep going in with the brush. And also keeping your brush at 90 degrees is a fantastic way to get used to using the product. You don't want to be up here because you'll dent it and make marks. You don't want to be down here or you'll end up pulling all the product to the tip of the nail. So gently working at like 90 degrees and you can literally pull the, the gel around the nail. That would be how I would best describe how to use it. Now, a little trick that us nail techs would do from time to time, if you feel like you're not happy with the shape, you can turn your finger upside down and gently rock back and forth. What this is going to do is going to pull all the gel into the center of the nail, which is where we want it to be. So if you're ever unsure or you think you may be over applied that's a really good trick now what we're going to do is we're going to pop it into the lamp this is our first coat and we're going to do it onto the lighter is it called the lighter setting the low heat setting okay that's just going to make sure it cures properly i know there's a few people who raise their hands i don't think i can see let me see oh i see some questions oh thank you very much i see some lovely questions so if you um keep popping your questions in i can't answer a raised hand so just write your questions in um, can you use the gel with a different UV lamp? You can't actually. An LED lamp, it's specifically designed to work with LED lamps. So there are certain UV lamps that it just physically won't cure in. So just bear that in mind. And it's always best to use when you're using a product like this. It's always best to use the manufacturing instructions and stick with the one brand throughout. Um, do I email 40 Day Manicure by previous masterclass recording? Yes, you can. Um, I don't have that, but if you DM them even on Instagram or drop them an email, they will send that to you. Okay, so now we've got one layer on. Keep the questions coming. I'll dip in and out. Um, 
someone says, what if your nails are too short to cap? I'm actually going to show you exactly what to do there. Um, but see, we've got here, I'm going to move the questions sorry, they're in my eye line now. So you might be able to see there, we've got a nice thin layer of the builder gel, maybe could go closer to the cuticle line the next time. But that is how we are looking. So your second coat then can just be to even out any mistakes that you've made or to perfect it. So I'm going to kind of base it like it's a perfecter. So again, removing what we love to do, remove all the product from the brush so that it's only on one side of the brush. This is just going to give you maximum control. We're going to dip back in, get a small bit on the tip of our brush and work again. So again, just staying as far away from the cuticle as you can, because what we don't want to do is flood the cuticle. And this time we're basically using the coat to just even over and give us that nice thick layer that we want, but thick in the right places. So smooth around the cuticle line and a little bit thicker in the center. And then again, smooth on the free edge. This is what we call the free edge here. And again, I am capping here, but we I will get to how you work with a shorter nail, okay? I'm gonna show you on this nail before I repair it like magic. So there we go, that's a much thinner coat. Again, you could work with two extremely thin coats like this if you have shorter nails. Mine is a bit longer, so it does require a little bit more product. Again, we're going in at the low heat setting. And giving that a couple of seconds, I'm going to pop in. Somebody asked to use the cuticle remover first. Yes, use the cuticle remover. I tend not to need it because I'm using it a lot in between manicures. But yes, pop your cuticle remover on and then wash your hands um, before you apply the product. Oh, thank you. My ring is fab. Thank you. Have that a good while. Um, also, I cure my nails for 60 seconds. Is this too long? No, it's not too long. Um, depending on the setting that you're using, if you've got the 14 day manicure lamp, follow the instructions to a T. But actually, you can cure the builder gel for up to 90 seconds. So I would always cure longer than shorter. So if in doubt, leave it in a bit longer. Um, there's no harm in that. Um, are you building an apex like with hard gel application and what's the best way to remove the builder gel? Um, yes, I am building an apex here, but what I'm about to show you when we move to the shorter nail is that you don't always have to do that. Um, but it is good practice to get into to focus the, the strength in the center of the nail. And the reason for those who may maybe don't know what an apex is, if you imagine a bridge, most of the strength in the bridge is actually in the center. And that is really what we're trying to create on the nail. A flat nail that's long is quite weak and it almost acts like a seesaw. So if there's too much, basically I'll show you on my nail, if there's too much thick product down here, it's going to bend. Where you really need the strength is in that center there. And it's almost trying to create what, what's called an apex. So it's basically the center. So if you're not a nail technician, that's just a, a term that we would use to create that curve. And that's always what you're trying to do. So as your nails get longer, which will happen with the builder gel, be ready for maximum nail growth you're going to get. Um, but definitely try and always focus the strength of the product in the center. Um, I struggled with my builder gel where I put it into the lamp and it's ended up pooling and drying outside of my nail. What did I do wrong? I actually I'm going to make a mistake on purpose to show you that that happens. I think generally the reason the gel will move is because you maybe overworked it. And so it's hard because what you don't want to do is, is spend too little time shaping it perfectly. But you also don't want to overwork the gel because the gel, when it comes out, is kind of at its perfect consistency. You sort of move it around the nail and it's great. And if you've got it, get it in the lamp. Sometimes you're not as fast. It, it happens. That can sometimes happen when you overwork the nail. But what I would recommend is whether you've got your metal hoof stick from the starter kit or an orange wood stick or even the edge of your own nail. I always think it's great practice to get into to scoop around the outside of the nail before it goes into the lamp. And that's just going to remove any product that's going to stick into the skin. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and make a mistake as hard as it is for me. I will try and show you how you can fix it afterwards okay so that is basically your gel builder done we are going to pop on the top coat and it's sorted it's finished it's so quick so easy so that's if you're using the color gel again the color gel I'm using is don't make me blush and it's a super healthy pink milky shade it's so natural stunning it just makes your nails look really healthy now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a short nail because I know not everybody has 
nails like this although you you most likely will once you start using the builder gel honestly it just it makes your nails grow so nicely so what I'm going to show you is here's my shorty here so I'm going to just shape it a little bit let's say we'll do it in a square because I know that maybe not a lot of people can get that oval shape in their natural nails so let's take the length down so that it's closer to maybe what you might have at home and it's difficult to cap the edge and what do you do so let me show you so here's our shorty I don't even remember how I broke this, but anyway, pains me, but the, you'd never even know when I use the builder gel. Okay, so that's nice and short, not much of a free edge there. Again, we're gonna use the same products. I'm gonna use the primer. Again, if you don't have the primer, acetone that comes in the kit and a and lint-free nail wipe is, is perfect. But I just find that this, if you're lift prone nails, if you're oily nails is fantastic. And honestly, I've, I haven't gone back since I started using it. You can use it depending if, if you have any nail type, but honestly, if you're someone who struggles to keep gel on, it's it's the one for you. Again, we're going to use the base coat and just to stress, taking all the product off and then going back in and scooping just enough. It's just a really good habit to get into. And all the years I'm doing now is I still do that because it's a it's really hard to work when with when your brush is loaded with product. So we're going to go a couple of millimeters away from the cuticle line swipe down again this you're really trying to get a super thin layer that's what you're looking for you're looking to get coverage around the nail but super thin I'm going to pop that in for 30 seconds and now I'm going to use the same colored builder gel just to show you because I think it's easier to see than the clear but this time we're going to work a little bit different we're going to work thinner and we're not going to have as much free edge to cap with but I'm going to show you how to overcome that so we are almost 30 seconds there. I'm going to pull this out and just stress again how we want very little product on our brush. So the faster you pull out of a bottle, the more product you're going to have on your brush. OK, so I'm going to show you now. So if you just pull it really quickly, you see a lot of product there. OK, so bottle upright. I'm going to turn it to the side just so you guys can see. And I'm going to clear my brush. You see that? And I'm going to clear the other side and then I'm going to go back in and take exactly what I need, which is this much. And it's only on one side. OK, so that is key. It just makes your life easier and it, it's much easier to work with. So I'm going to pull my hand this way just so you can get a better look at what I'm doing. So I'm going to, again, put the product down. And come away. See, that is just a little bit of product, a little bit less than the last time. And I'm going to work that gently towards the cuticle line and feather my brush away and again I'm just going to work around the cuticle line feathering brush away so essentially I'm trying to keep all that product in the center do you see the way it's still in the center now when I'm working with a with a smaller nail a shorter nail like this I'm going to clean my brush again okay and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the clean side of my brush and I'm gently going to feather the product that's sitting in the center of the nail I'm not going to go all the way down again and I'm just going to try and see the angle I'm going to try and be at this angle so that I'm capping the edge as much as I can but I'm not swiping across now if your nail is so short that the skin is practically there again use your nail scoop around the edge and clean that okay so now we're going to go in I can already tell that I've slightly put a little bit of product on my skin there so it's actually perfect that's exactly what I want to show you but I'm going to make sure I do it on purpose in the next um coat because I just want you to see that making a mistake like that it's not the end of the world you don't have to take all your nails off once you've got a fantastic file like this file um I'll show you it comes in the starter kit um for the gel polish I'm not sure if it's in the builder gel but this super thin file is fantastic for fixing mistakes so don't panic we all make mistakes um but this file is, is excellent and I would recommend if you're if you're a regular um, builder gel user to get a rougher file so just to give you an idea the lower the grit or the the lower the grit number so 100 180 sorry I'll turn it around 100 180 100 essentially means that per square there are less sandpaper dots essentially so this is going to mean it's a, it's rougher 180 will be softer so this combination is fantastic what normally comes in the gel polish kits generally wouldn't be strong enough for removal so I would always say pick up a file that has a hundred grit which you can almost see 
here, the thicker grit and the softer side. Okay, so now we're going to do our second coat here. Again, same steps to follow, but let's say you have too much product on your brush. Okay, let's just, pains me to do this, but we'll do it. So you have too much product on your brush. You're putting it on the nail. It's difficult to use. It's getting all over the place. You're blobbing it around. It's Again, it's not going to be the end of the world. Okay, oh God, I can't even work with this much product myself. But let's say we accidentally get it on the side wall. The side wall would be down the side wall here. Okay. So let's say, for example, that happens. And okay, we spot it in time and we wipe it away, but maybe we don't do it enough. Okay. Or let's say you leave a gap like that around your cuticle or it's not even, it's all fixable. So let me show you. I want to make sure that I show you things that are practical for you at home because sometimes you're in a rush or one nail just doesn't cooperate. We've all been there. Um, but this is a fantastic way to repair, okay? So always keeping a lint-free pad nearby with some acetone because as I mentioned before, each layer is sticky. And so if you're going to need to file or fix anything, you are going to have to remove that stickiness before you file. So just keep that in mind. Um, sorry, I'm trying to open this acetone here one hand. Um, so I use the lint-free pad, lint-free wipes. They're from 14 Day Manny as well. And I'm just going to pop a little bit of acetone on that. So we know we made a mistake, but we're at that stage now. We're going to take off the shine. So here we've got that sticky layer. You can see that I've accidentally, make sure I show you, accidentally stuck to my skin there. Okay. Easy to fix. All right. So we're going to take off the shine like that. So now it's smooth. It's not sticky anymore. We're going to get either the 100, 180 grit or the skinny file, whichever is handier. And we're going to file that side wall. Now make sure you pinch to release first so that you're not filing your skin. Make sure you get rid of anything that's stuck. And what we're going to do is gently file and shape that side so that we're not stuck to our skin anymore. Okay. And you can see I've done it on the other side. That was unintentional. But if you just can see that there I'm going to release that from my skin and then file that side and then if you've got the softer buffer file like this I believe it comes in your kit and you feel like there's a bump there I don't know if you can see that bump I'm trying to get the camera to focus there we go there's kind of a little bump I haven't gone all the way to the cuticle like I'd want to so let's fix that using the purple side the blue side whichever I'm just going to gently file and buff that down. So I'm going to go in at an angle, file and buff it down. And then what you can either do is go back in with a super thin layer of the builder gel and fix that. Or your top coat, if it hasn't, if it hasn't been applied too thickly, your top coat will smooth all that over. So another quick wipe with your acetone, straight in with your top coat or go ahead with another layer of builder. But now what I really want to show you is that here's a broken nail. What do we do? Um, 14 Day Manny have fantastic product called Forms. Now, these aren't the easiest things to use. However, if you're prone to breaking nails, they are fantastic to have around because what they'll do is make it super easy for you to repair a nail in seconds. So this is basically the form here. I like to put the little sticky thing back here. I have no idea why I've been doing it for years. It makes no sense to me, but I do it anyway. So you there's a little tear. You tear this open and then you've got this little, it's essentially a form ready to repair. So I've also have an issue with my uh, thumbnail. I've, it's kind of worn away here. So whether you pop it on and just repair one side like that, or whether you pop it onto your shorty like I have here. And then you can repair. So let me show you. Steps are the same. I would do the base coat on the natural nail. Then I would attach the form. And then I will go in with my builder gel. So we're working with the builder gel a little differently when we're doing a form. Now, not everyone's going to be able for this first off, but when you get used to the builder gel, it's so easy to fix a nail. Like it's going to be even tempting to have a break so you can just magically repair it at home yourself. So we're going to use a tiny bit more product on the form. But again, we're making life easy for ourselves. We're clearing one side of the brush and we're going back in, taking a, a probably a bit more than we have been. See that there? And what we're going to do is, so this is where you can offload the product. So what we do is it's basically like a 180 degree. 
So we're placing it just at the edge of our natural nail where the break is and we're offloading it. See that? So I've offloaded the gel to the tip of my natural nail. Now, what I'm going to do is maneuver it so that I get a little edge onto that form. And if you don't have enough product, like I don't, go back in, take a bit more. And what we're going to do is drag it down onto this form so that we can lengthen our nail. Sorry, this is a little hard to do at this angle. But basically, we're dragging the product out and creating a false length using the builder gel. Sorry, no, this isn't going. I like to be closer to my nails. I'm going to start leaning over now just so I can see it properly. But again, we're lengthening this to try and match the shape of the other nails. You could totally do this if you've got a break on one side or like my thumb has. You know, it doesn't have to be a full lengthening of the nail. It can literally be just to make a repair. But I absolutely love forms. So now we're going to stick that in again on the low heat setting and give that a few seconds. I'm going to pop into the questions again to see if I missed anything. Um, is builder gel from the bottle better for extensions than a tub of builder? Honestly, it makes no difference. Like it depends on the actual product. So there are some builder gels that are flexi gels, which soak off with acetone that are in a tub. There are some flexi gels that are in a bottle like this. Personally, I find when you're at home, the easiest thing to use would be something like this because the brush is there. It's simple, it's straightforward. How long do you put your nails under the lamp for? I believe it's 90 seconds, but I'm going to pull that up and just double check. I'm pretty sure it's 90 seconds on the low setting, but I will check. Um, is it, oh, is it possible to do a darker matte background as it's a bit hard to see the light color? Thank you. That's great feedback. I don't have anything handy with me now, but that definitely going forward. Thank you for that feedback, um, Kate. Um, can you watch this after the session? Yes, you will be sent a recording of this after the session. Um, I have the old style 40 day manicure lamp. I can't adjust the heat setting. You don't have to adjust the heat setting. So I, so I have not adjusted the heat setting and I've just left it in longer, but it is more gentle on the nail. If you are using a, a the low heat setting, it's, it's less heat on the natural nail. So it's just better. But if you have the 40 day manicure LED lamp, you should still be able to, to use it. Any tips on how to not go too close to the cuticle? It's difficult, I know. And it's sort of tempting as well, because I think the best way to, to not go as close to the cuticle is to use less product on your brush and maybe your placement a little bit further away. Also, the angle of which your brush is at. So remember, I'm just going to use this for example. Remember, if you are here, if you are not at 90 degrees and you're too high, visually yourself, you're not going to be able to see. So coming down to 90 degrees makes it much easier to control your brush. And again, not being completely flat to the nail where you've no control and you end up pushing the product towards the cuticle. So a couple of things, 90 degrees and place your product further away maybe than you think you need to. And then gently drag it around the cuticle line would be my best advice. OK, so now we've got this. This has dried. don't know if you can hear that. But what we're going to do is before we take the form off, I'm just going to connect it to the nail properly so that we can really make sure that this is stuck. So again, I'm using just a, a thicker amount of gel than I would normally. Again, this is just a little trick. It's probably not something that you'll be doing every time. Hopefully the builder gel has given you enough strength and you don't need to repair any nails, but it is very convenient to know that if you do break a nail, you've got all the tools you need to fix it. So again, I'm literally just pulling a thicker layer on top and it's really just to connect the two. And I'm going to pop that in again. I'm going to go back to the questions. So keep them coming, guys. The nails are short and extremely weak. Am I okay to use? I bought the full kit. Absolutely. Absolutely you are. So just make sure that when your nails are weaker, that you're being as gentle as possible when it comes to the prep. So using your file, and I think I showed you earlier, but just while that's curing, I can show you on my thumb, light strokes with the file. If you, for example, if you're ever unsure of, of what kind of pressure to use, if you get your hand and rub it on your, on your leg extremely fast, you'll feel the heat, you'll feel the friction, okay? The same thing goes for your nail file. Seesawing like that without lifting the file in between strokes is gonna cause friction. It can cause damage. It's uncomfortable. So lifting your file when you're buffing is key, especially if your nails are a little bit weaker. But I think that the builder gel would be fantastic for you, even on its own, whether you're using it over a color, which I'm going to show you now in a minute. OK, so this is now dried. If you're ever unsure, you can do a little tap. We're going to take the form off. 
And I wouldn't normally have used the builder on the nail prior to lengthening it, but I did because there were a few questions there about shorter nails. I did want to show you how to do it on short nails. But again, I'm going to use the little lint free wipe and a bit of acetone and I'm going to file this. OK, so this is where we've created this gorgeous length with our little form. And what I want to do is shape it so that it matches my other nails. So this is where the 100 grit file really comes into its own because the, the gel is thicker than your normal polish and more, more than your natural nails. So what we want to do is get this into a lovely shape. I did see another question there, like, how do you remove it? You can remove it with acetone. You can also remove it with an e-file. I would say e-file, if you're feeling more comfortable, you can use an e-file and it is fantastic. However, I would say even in skilled hands that that can be dangerous. So just be careful. So again, I'm just literally filing this to make it more smooth and to get the shape closer to the rest of my natural nails. So I'm taking in the side. Oh, sorry. I had a shot there. Taking in the side walls. I'm buffing it over the top to make it a little bit thinner. Again, this isn't your natural nail that you're filing here. This is the gel. So you can afford to use the 100 grit file here comfortably. Um, but just make sure you're lifting. Can you see the way I'm lifting? So that go, that's the same goes for when you're using a light buffer. Lifting the file always. You never want to seesaw on the nail like this. Not good. And if you know, if you want to do the, the trick on your thigh, you'll instantly feel it and go, okay, and now I know what I've been doing to my nails all this time. Or if you've had a manicure, I mean, it's, you know, sometimes it's, you do feel that heat and it's really unpleasant. Um, okay, so we're going to file that down. And then, Always looking around the nail, look at the side. Let's flatten this a little bit more before we do our next coat and just getting that shape as perfect or as close as we can. Obviously, it is a, a false nail, so we, we aren't going to have it looking exactly like our natural nail, but pretty close. And so filing that in. So now, next step is I'm going to wipe it again with my acetone. Need a bit more so you're literally just popping it onto your lint free pad get rid of the dust it's one reason why we mostly use white when we're doing nails is because dust does get everywhere and now we're going to basically you work with this as if it's a natural nail now that we have our our form done we have our extra length so i'm going to go into my builder gel clean the brush clean the product pick up the little bit that we need I'm going to place that in the center this time. I'm going to show you. I think that's a bit easier to see. And I'm going to work that around the nail. So normally this part of the nail would be bare aside from the base coat. But because I showed you how to do a short nail, there is a bit of gel on there. Um, and then I'm just going to drag it down. Do you remember I was saying let's keep all the product in the center? I'm just going to work that around the nail. And don't be afraid to use a side of your brush. Like if you feel that it's easy, it's going to be easier for you to get in close to the cuticle, play around with it. But again, less product is better and it's much easier to control. Okay, so we're going to pop that in. So when you start a little way from the cuticle line and you press it down, does it kind of push towards the cuticle line or do you prefer to stay away? I push it towards the cuticle line, but I still leave a very subtle line like what what you're really trying to do is that when the product is growing out for example if I can show you here when the product is growing out that it's seamless obviously you can see the gap but that it's not thick so trying to get as thin a line around the cuticle as possible will help with that seamless regrowth Um, the thicker that area is the worse it will look and the harder it is to remove. So trying to keep as much product away from the cuticle line as possible. So if in doubt, come a little bit further. I always err on the side of caution and come away slightly. That would always be my preference. I'm going to keep answering your question. So there's our little fake nail. Would you know? I'm going to top coat them all at the end anyway. But now what I want to show you is how you would use the clear builder. Now, obviously, you can use the clear builder on its own, just as I have with don't make me blush here on these two nails. However, if you did want to use it with a color, let's say the red, let's give it a go. Again, I'm going to use my primer because I'm addicted to the primer now. It just makes everything last so well. So one coat of the primer that doesn't go into the lamp. So just be aware of that. It just air dries itself. And then I'm going to use one thin coat of the base coat. So if you weren't on our last masterclass, this is how I do the um, colored gel. So I'm going to do a thin coat of the base coat. 
all along the nail again capping that edge popping that in on the normal heat for 30 seconds I'm going to just keep answering all of your questions when my nails are curing it burns after 10 seconds it is normal not everybody gets that feeling what I tend to suggest is coming out of the lamp immediately and pressing down on the nail that burns sometimes it's just the way the lamp reacts with the gel and it can feel a little bit hot don't worry don't panic it's just some people feel it more than others generally if your nails are a little bit thinner naturally you will feel it some people don't feel it so um you could also be using a little bit too much product so if in doubt and you find it uncomfortable try the thinner coats of the builder gel even do three thin coats so that you're you're being sure but again it's nothing to worry about um when I use the builder job before it turns out very soft and it ends up chipping or pulling off what am I doing wrong so the the builder gel is a little bit softer than what you expect hard gel to be however you might not be using enough product or potentially you might be using um, the wrong prep product. So if it's kind of lifting and pulling away from your nail or chipping, it could easily be because of the prep. So if you're one of these people, if you're like me and you end up getting chipping, the primer might be key for you. Or if you've got the acetone at home, give that a try. But the primer is fantastic. And again, when I use gel polish, I tend to do two coats of base coat because I just find that it it sits a lot better. I personally prefer it. So I'm going to use a second coat of the base coat. And you can do that if you want to. Once you're working really thinly with the product, don't be afraid to go for two coats of base. So now we're going to pop that in again before I do the color. How many times can you do refills with Builder Gel? I tend not to do refills with the Builder Gel. I don't know if you can see my regrowth. I tend to just buff it off or soak it off and redo it. Now, obviously, everybody's nails are different. But what I would say is if you do refill and it works for you, I would probably do two, like apply them and refill once. And if, if you don't know what a refill is, it's just as it grows out, people will buff down that regrowth and apply gel in the growth. That's absolutely fine, but I personally would only maybe do it once because the gel is soft. So I find that removing it fully um, every time works for me, but every second time, if if you're finding refills work for you. Can the builder gel be removed the same as normal gel? It's the exact same process for removal. It's just going to take a little bit longer. Naturally, the product's thicker, it's stronger, so it is going to take a bit more time. So just give yourself more time and Again, this file comes in handy because you do want to file the top properly, whereas your buffer is a little bit softer. So if you're getting used to having the gel, um, builder gel on, then I would invest in the 100, 180 grit file for sure. So just like you would with your normal gel polish, we are going to go in with a coat of color. Just so again, I take most of the product off the brush and work slightly away from the cuticle. Again, we all make mistakes. You can see here, I've got a little bit red on the skin. I'm gonna use the edge of my nail, scoop that away, and we're gonna pop that in to cure. Is the lamp that comes with the gel starter kit the same lamp? Yes, it is. Um, it's the lamp that has the adjustable heat setting as well. Might be a silly question, but how do you know if you have oily nails? I'm a complete novice and struggling with longevity. Potentially you have oily nails Um, in that case. I suppose it's not something you would really think about until you're wearing gel polish or gel or acrylic. And if you're prone to lifting or like you say, you're struggling with longevity, you could be an oily nail person just like me. Um, it, it's almost like oily skin. Obviously, you can see that in your skin and you know makeup doesn't last or you might have to use a primer or a lot of powder. It's the same kind of concept. And so if you're an oily nail person, I would acetone with a lint free nail wipe and I would prime. So there are two things that I tend to do when I'm doing manicures. I would do that for everybody to err on the side of caution because I love when it lasts for people. But I would also say do that for yourself. The primer is fantastic. It balances the nail and it will really, really help with lifting. Um, so definitely invest in the primer. And in the meantime, use the acetone and use it properly. So there are a couple of things as well that people forget. Oils and gel do not go hand in hand. While we love to drench our nails post gel polish or post acrylic or builder gel, it's really something you want to 
completely avoid before you apply any product to your nails. So we need a temporary dehydrated nail in order for the gel to stick properly. So no oils, um, no hand wash, no nothing that might leave a coating on your nail prior to gel application is really key. And if in doubt, a little wipe with a lint-free acetone pad is key. Okay, so we're going to go with our second coat of color, which is just your standard normal way to apply the gel polish color. I love this color from 14 Day Manicure. So this is just your standard way of applying it. What you would normally do after this coat is go straight in with your top coat. But what we're going to do is we're going to put a builder gel on top and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Okay, when I use normal gel polish, it lifts and chips and doesn't last more than a week. What am I doing wrong? I think, again, this falls into the prep. It could also be capping the edge. I know it can be hard to cap an edge of, a, of the nail when you don't have much of an edge. However, angling your brush can actually do that for you. I'm going to show you that now with the Builder Gel. Um, but it, it's really important that you seal. Essentially, you've done all this work and the free edge is your most vulnerable place, whether you're hitting off things whether you're picking off a label whatever you might be doing with your nails that is the most vulnerable point so it's really important that you make sure that the product is sealed at the edge at every layer so not just with your base coat not just with your color but with every layer so let me show you again what I mean about capping so here we go we've got a gorgeous color coat on that nail and now we've got our clear builder gel you might notice if you've got well you should if you got the starter kit for the builder gel you will notice that the texture is a little bit different on the clear it's a little bit more runny so just bear that in mind um compared to the other products you've got a little bit how can i explain it it'll run faster so i would tend to work with this a lot thinner than the other gel products okay but again nothing different about this we are clearing our brush of all product to make it as easy as possible okay we're going to go back in do a little scoopy scoop so we've got a little bit on the edge of the brush so now our color gel is on we haven't applied our top coat because we are planning to add some extra strength and the reason you would do this is you love your color gel you prefer to wear color you'll have it on for three weeks but you find that your nails either don't last chip break whatever it might be in the in the meantime this is going to be perfect for you so again staying away from that cuticle line I'm going to make sure I get this staying away from that cuticle line and then just gently pushing upwards and dragging down so I'm working a lot thinner this time because if you imagine we've got our base coat we've got two layers of color we don't need a lot of this product okay versus just a, a, a color gel on a natural nail on its own we need a lot more, okay? So I'm working with this nice and thinly. I'm gonna do two coats of it. And what I'm doing is here, sealing that edge. If you can't seal the edge in that way, I'm gonna turn it to the side just so you can see. Your 90 degree brush, and you're gonna to come to the edge, and then it's actually the way you paint it that's gonna seal the edge in. So you don't even always have to go like this, but if in doubt, do that. But it's the way you position your brush can really help seal the product in when you're painting. Um, so I'm going to let that cure again on the low setting for 90 seconds. Did you buff your nail plate before prep and how please? Yes, I did. I'm going to show you on my thumb now. I'm going to do that fully again just to show you. Um, did you cure each nail separately? So the only reason I'm doing that is purely because of showing you different techniques. However, when the, the gel product moves I would always especially at home when working with a builder gel like this cure each nail at a time absolutely fine to go with the base coat all five fingers and in color coat all five fingers and in top coat all five fingers and in but with the builder gel I would do one nail at a time because you can see how delicate it is and when you're working with it and you have it perfect get it in that lamp cure it immediately set it in its perfect placement and position and texture and then move on to the next nail. So it's fine to do most of your coats all five fingers, but I would, with your builder gel, just work with it one finger at a time, especially when you're getting used to the texture. The recording will be coming later. So sorry if you missed the beginning, that's no problem. Do you need to wipe over the nail with Astone after applying builder gel or not? No, you can go straight in with your top coat, which I'm going to show you. The only reason I wiped over was when I was going to file the nail or I made a mistake. So the only time you need to get rid of that sticky layer that's on the builder gel is if you've made a mistake and you're going in with your nail file to fix it. 
Otherwise, carry through straight with your top coat. Um, can forms be used for short nails to give length? Yes, they can. Um, the Builder Gel is a more flexible gel. So work a little bit thicker if you're adding length, just like I did. You'll kind of see how thick it is in comparison to the other nails. So I'll show you that in a second. But now we're going to go in with our second coat of Clear Builder. Again, clearing, I'm just going to keep, I know I keep repeating myself, but I think it's so important. Like imagine trying to work with this much product on the nail, like it would just be impossible. So clearing all that product off the brush, getting just the amount that we need. I'm going to just gently pop it on the nail and drag down to the tip. I'm going to make sure you can see that working really really light with my brush I'm not dragging it around like I did with the other but actually I've just hit into my cuticle there so it's a perfect opportunity for me to show you what I would do to fix that so I don't know if you can see but we are flooding the cuticle here so I'm going to get my nail and I'm going to scoop if you don't have a long nail get your metal stick and you're going to scoop around the edge and then wipe it off onto a lint-free pad so don't be afraid or get in a good habit of doing this because it'll help make sure that you're not flooding the cuticle. Now, popping that in, letting that cure on the low setting for 90 seconds. How do you clear a brush after using the builder in a tub? Okay, so I would use a lint-free pad. So again, not, um, not cotton wool or you'll destroy your brush, but these lint-free pads from 14 Day Manicure have absolutely no lint in them. So they will completely cleanse your gel brush for you. And they'll work without any brush. If you ever need to clean your brush, use a lint-free pad like that. And um, that should be enough. How can I stop the builder gel from lifting or peeling off? I think I dress that, but if in doubt, thinner coat. So if you're not comfortable working with it thickly on the nail, go for a thinner coat because it's going to be easier for you to cure each layer. You're not going to be over applying it because sometimes applying it too thick can cause lifting. But nine times out of 10, lifting is down to prep, especially if it's on the free edge or around the cuticle. That's 99 times or nine times out of 10 is down to prep. OK, so now I'm going to show you complete from start to finish. So now we've got our clear builder gel two coats we've cured it we're going to go in with our no wipe top coat I love the no wipe top coat this say you know it's done it's cooked it's ready so again no matter what product we're using we are not taking out a thick brush we are making sure all the products clear and we are applying the top coat come up here applying the top coat thin layer all around the nail make sure I can see what I'm doing and again cap that edge if you can if you've got enough for a free edge, get around there with your top coat. I'm going to cure that again on the normal setting. Keep going to your questions. What would you do if your nails are short and the form doesn't fit neatly behind the nail? It should fit neatly. What I would say is, again, working one nail at a time and holding it or positioning it so that you're comfortable. I'll show you properly how to fit a form now in a second because it it kind of takes a bit of time to get used to. Um, and... You do have to work a little bit quicker. So if you find that you've got oily fingers, which is also a thing as well as oily nails, using a bit of acetone on a lint-free pad and wiping the finger so that the form sticks can be really, really helpful. But let me just show you because I, I know maybe I rushed through the form. So what we've got here, taking it off and it's sticky, okay? Now, I guess one of the reasons I've been doing this for so long is it probably helps to reinforce the other side when you put that little sticker there. So you're gonna tear this, which just makes it easier. And what I like to do is if your nails are kind of a funny shape, rock the form a little bit. So you're really just easing it into the shape of a nail, okay? So rocking it a little bit between your fingers and then getting your nail, getting your form and trying to work as straight as possible. So we're not coming down here we're not going up there. We don't want ski shaped nails. We want to go straight and we're going to nuzzle this into the nail. Now, this took me a while to get in fairness, like it's not the easiest thing to do. But then what you're going to do is stick the two sides underneath here. Can you see that there? So they're stuck together and we're going to make sure we're happy with that positioning. We're going to check the sides, make sure the sides are OK, because you can see where I've overfiled my nail there. So I need to build that back up there. So you, 
that is how you want your form to look. You want it to be pretty seamless here. Does take a bit of time to get used to, but rocking that form back and forth before you apply can really help. So there we go. That's one nail completely done. Well, sorry, there's three nails completely done. We have our builder gel here where we've fixed the, fixed the nail. We've got our natural nail here and we've got our clear gel on top of color. I'm going to keep going through the questions. Can I use multiple layers of builder gel to get more strength? I find two layers isn't enough. Yes, you can. Also, you if you saw me using it, kind of the apex with it, that might be a great solution for you as well. Just putting more strength into the center. So because we had a question about buffing, I'm just going to go over this again. Using the purple side or the blue side, whichever, but the purple side's good. And you're going to buff the nail. You're taking all the shine off the nail. Gel hates shine. Uh, so we want none. And working around the cuticle line and making sure we get rid of all of that. And again, lifting your file. You're filing, you're lifting, you're buffing, you're lifting. You're not keeping the file attached to the nail the whole time. You are lifting and moving. So then we can see we've got most of the shine gone. I love a thin file like this to really get around the cuticle line and make sure that there's no other shiny bits. And that is how you file to prep a nail. And then what I would tend to do is bit of the 14 day Manny acetone onto a cotton pad or not a cotton pad a lint-free pad and now this is for you nail lifters out there okay you are going to wipe the nail you are going to hug the nail with your fingers and wipe and don't be afraid to go around the cuticle line because that is where the oiliness comes from it's your cuticle okay so your cuticle prep is key your buffing is key and then your wiping is key and then because I'm such a fan oily nail girls primer will be my next step but if you're not oily that that should be enough a little quick wipe with acetone will just get rid of any natural oils on the nail plate but the primer really just sends it home and has helped me with lifting and it is just fantastic again that coat does not go into the lamp that just air dries okay so how to remove it there is a full removal video we won't have time to do it today but I will talk you through it you're going to use a rough file I personally prefer this one when I'm using builder gel because it's a little bit rougher. You're going to file the top coat. The top coat is the only part of any of the gel products in the 14 day Manny range that won't soak off. So it's really, really important that you pierce that top coat layer off. Now you're not filing through into your nail, but actually what I might do is I might show it to you on the red because I think it's quite easy to see. So what we're going to do is we're going to file the top coat off. So by filing the top coat off, we are creating a matte finish okay we're not breaking into the color with the nail file we are just taking that shine away can you see that and that is purely because the top coat doesn't soak every other element of the product is soakable and will come off with acetone but you must file the shine away from the top coat in order to get the acetone to work so that is how so you just carry on around the nail again we're lifting we are not seesawing we are lifting we're being gentle to the nail. We're staying away from the cuticle line. And obviously this is going to be much easier as it's grown down. It is difficult to get close to the cuticle line when it's freshly applied. So you're going to buff all that off. And I have a fantastic removal video on my Instagram. It's Pamela underscore Laird. And it shows you several different ways to remove it. So we've got the magic gel remover, which I love. You can use your acetone in a bowl. You can use your acetone with foils. There's also pre-soaked um removal um pre-soaked removal I can't remember the name of them but they're on the 14 day Manny website and they're great they just literally latch onto the nail and they will soak the product off they're fantastic um so that is how you remove it that's the main step and then as the product is coming away you use your little metal stick and you scrape it off but my video will show you exactly how each of them remove it I have the one in the tub, not the bottle. I used it last night. It was so thick and gloopy. Tried to only use a small bit on top of colour and was wiping colour off with the brush. And it didn't cure properly. It was still sticky after top coat. Where did I go wrong? Okay, so initially there, the colour was wiping the colour off with the brush. So the colour wasn't cured either. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. Again, I think the one in the pot is maybe just slightly harder to use because you are scooping up what you want. But I hope maybe my tips of getting it on the very tip of your brushes is easier. Now, sometimes what I like to do, I'll show you with the top coats. Sometimes when you've got a brush in a pot, you kind of want to like soak your brush in the gel so that it's 
it's working with it. I hope that makes sense. But if you've got a completely dry brush and you're entering a gel product, it's hard to work the product. So what I like to do is with now, just imagine this is a pot and a brush. Okay. Soak your brush in the gel and even with your lint pad, kind of work it through the brush so that your brush is, is connected with the gel polish, because as you might've seen with the tutorial, using that thread between the brush and the gel is really how you get the gel to work for you. So if your brush is dry and you go straight into gel, it can be hard to work it together. So work the gel into your brush, clean it off though. So make sure that it's tacky, but not loaded with product and then try and work with the gel brush and the pot. That would be my suggestion, but I hope connecting it I hate to use this expression, but when I was training, this is what they use, like a little dribble of spit connection between the gel polish and your brush. Sounds strange, but that is how you move the gel. So give that a try. I'm sorry to be so graphic. Um, can you use the builder to extend normally or is it best to just fix one? No, I, I've used it to, to extend normally. It's probably a little bit slower, like 14 Day Manicure have fantastic products coming that will do a full set of length and nails. It is fantastic. It's I, I keep checking the website. I don't think it's out yet, but there are easier, quicker ways to do a full set of lengthened nails. So I tend to stick for, with the builder gel for for purely repair sake but there's no reason why you couldn't do a full set um can you do a filing masterclass or share some tips i would love to and um, there's so many different ways to file and you i mean i could talk all day about even just how to do different shapes and what nail files to use again if you're unsure about about shaping your nails it's really all about the angle so if you are too close you can't see what you're filing again you're seesawing and you're not getting a good enough shape i'm just gonna move that out of my way 90 degrees floating around what you do to one side do to the other because what you don't want to do is over file one side and not the other so making sure that you give yourself enough room and you're floating and the same kind of goes for the top of the nail I personally hold your nail file like a pen okay like as if you're going to write with it and then slide your hand down to the other side and then turn it over. This is the perfect place to be when you're filing your nails, okay? If you're here, you're too close. You're not, you don't have enough room, okay? So if in doubt, write like a pen, pull the nail file down, twist, and that is where you want to be. Similar thing goes for when you're filing over the top of the nail. I like to be at the end so that I can use the nail file. Also, the cheat of these lovely oval shaped files, they're perfect to use on the nail because they, they float around the cuticle line too. So again, light strokes, hold it like a pen, pull down, and then you've got perfect control and move your hand around, you know, making sure that it's comfortable for you. Um, I hope that helps. This all looks doable on my left hand as I'm right handed, but zero control using my left hand to apply. I think the key is a table, okay? You've got to have, I mean, I'm not great at this hand either. I tend to do this hand first, okay? The, my bad hand. The reason is because I'm sort of more eager at the beginning. I'm less tired and I'm going to be more focused. So I tend to do this hand first and I give myself a lot of room. I'm not doing my nails in bed, you know, and I, I could probably try, but I prefer to give myself as much room as possible. So try and do it at a table, try and do it with adequate lighting and it will make it much easier. Um, hopefully I've explained how to remove builder without damaging. Again, check my video if you're not sure. I've gone to two different beauticians for builder gel. I got my nails done Thursday and already they're broke. Any advice? I can't get more than a week out of them. I really hope that that technique of, of putting it into the center of the nail might help. And again, there's no harm in going in with another coat and placing your product in the center where generally the breaks are caused. I also would shorten your nail. If you're not getting the length of time out of your um, builder gel or gel polish, it could be just that the nails are too long. And for a lot of people, they just can't hold on to length in their nails. So don't be afraid to take the length out, length out and get longer out of your nails. If your nails are long, all the pressure's on the tip. So it can cause chipping, it can cause a breaking so definitely shorten if in doubt that's what I would say um I'm doing everything you're saying but after taking my nails out of the lamp some parts of the nails have no builder gel okay so you're getting shrinking have you tried file so sorry when I say shrinking I mean the product has moved into itself and left the edges of the nail if that's happening with your base coat try a second coat of base coat 
if it's happening, no matter what you're using, try using a rougher file to do your um, prep. So try using a, a more rough file because what that will do is help the gel connect and stop it from shrinking. If you're not using the acetone, do and wipe around the, the skin because the skin could be causing some of your lifting if it's naturally oily. There are clients I've had who I've had to like almost soak their finger for a couple of seconds in acetone to make sure that that oil didn't affect the product. So try that. But I'm, my DMs are open on Instagram if, you've, if you're still struggling. Um, can I use the better gel and put color on top? Yes, you can. I've done that before. I always follow um, the manufacturer's guidelines. So I would tend to use it the way 40 day manicure say. However, I've been this soldier who's done that and then gone, oh, I kind of want a color. So what I've done is just gently buffed it down the way I've done that. Obviously that's red, but I've gently buffed it down and applied color on top. And that's absolutely fine to do. It lasts like it definitely works. Um, do I need to remove the boiler gel every two weeks when I want to change the color? Yes, I personally prefer doing it that way. Um, again, if you're if you're someone who maybe likes this for, for a week and then wants a color, you could do the color on top if you want it. And then all you're filing away is the color and the builder is staying underneath. That's also an option. Um, again, the 14 day Manny team prefer to use the builder on top of the color and that's absolutely fine. But I would be removing it then fully every two weeks uh, or three weeks. Um, I can't do a full remover the builder gel. It would be a little bit boring on this for you guys watching it, but I do, I will actually do it on my stories. I will after today, I'll 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 probably be taking this off because I know I'm all mismatched. So I will show you how the builder gel removes. It removes exactly like your normal gel polish. It's just a bit slower. Okay. So just give it time. Do you think soak off clips are better than using tinfoil? I personally haven't gone back since I used the magic gel remover. That's by 14 Day Manny. Don't have it beside me, but I, I am in love with it. It's so quick and easy. That would probably be my number one is the magic gel remover. Number two, I actually like a good old fashioned acetone in a bowl and soaking my fingers because I'm impatient and I find that the acetone penetrates faster when it's like that. Sometimes when you use the foil, it can evaporate. So I they're my two favorite methods. But like that, if you go onto Instagram, I do have a video showing every type that you can use. Um, where am I? Oh, I got lost there. Um, sorry, now I got myself lost. Um, oh, here I'm back again. Um, do you need to remove gel when applying new gel? I think I've answered that. I personally prefer to. Um, how do you fill them again when they grow out or do you need to remove and start again? You can fill them if you want. I personally prefer to remove it and start again. I just don't, I don't work with it that thick so that I can actually remove and start again. And I just find it gives a better finish. So this is it two weeks in on my nails. So you can see that growth. And um, so I probably get mostly three weeks out of it and I would just remove it by buffing. Um, can I get better doing my not, how can I get better? I hope I answered that for your non-dominant hand. Start first and just try your best at giving yourself as much room as possible. And also time, it's gonna take you longer, maybe do one nail at a time, if that's where you feel comfortable, that's always helpful. How can, uh, can you use the normal gel polish over the clear builder gel? Yes, you can. Again, 14 Day Manny like to use it the opposite way, like I showed you, color and then clear, um, but you can do it the other way. I would suggest, um, working thinner because don't forget you're going to have color on top so just make sure you're not working too thick um with the gel the recording is available after so don't worry if you missed anything you will get that sent out to you on email can i use the gel remover on the builder gel or is acetone better i think acetone is better in terms of time but i love the gel remover and the magic gel remover is fantastic so you'll just have to kind of reapply it a bit more because remember it's penetrating through a much thicker layer um can you put polish over it? Yes, you can. Um, you can put normal, like, oh, sorry, normal polish, not gel polish. You can paint over them if you want. If you've got gorgeous nail polish at home that you prefer the color of, you can absolutely do that. Um, I had Builder on for a few months in a row and now my nails are so thin and almost lifting. Any tips for safe removals or tips to avoid this happening? Um, I was using cuticle oil on and off. Look, I think the best way to do it is if you are, Look, you can get a lot of false length is what I call this from builder gel. It's where your nails grow. They're super long, but you will see my nails are not super strong. I don't know if you can see my nail bending there, but that is my natural nail. Okay. So if I was to leave my natural nail and take the builder gel off, 
I would probably remove almost all that length because that's going to take the pressure off the tip of my nail. So a lot of times people will take their gel off and go, ooh, look at my nails are so long. But without the strength of the builder gel, they may not have a hope of sustaining that length. And they'd never probably have got to that length without the builder gel in the first place. So take out that false length that has grown if you are giving yourself a break and cute oil, base coat, whatever it might be, or I say to a lot of my clients and had in the past, if you're removing builder gel, don't go straight from builder gel to nothing. Maybe shorten the length and go for the gel polish for a couple of weeks and then take that off. And then because your nails adapt, like they're an organism, they adapt and they know that they're, there's something on them. And also we've gotten heavier handed when you're using gel polish or builder gel you tend to be heavier handed because you know you can be. So when that's gone, it does take time for you to adapt and for your nails to adapt. So that would be my best tip. Um, I get, this is two weeks. How long do you get out of gel in a bottle? This is two weeks. I get probably three weeks. Um, could you do a math class on the e-file? I bought one, but I'm very nervous. There is a, a proper technique to using the e-file. So yes, hopefully 14 Day Manny will continue these master classes and we can add e-file to the list. Do I always need to apply top coat after builder gel and color coat? Yes, you do. Also, what is that fab color you put on now? I think this is lipstick red, is it? This is the one I used the last one. I'm going to find out. Sorry, I peeled the sticker off. That's totally my fault. I will find out what red it is. Um, the top coat is your shine. It's your gloss. So you're not going to have that if you don't seal it in with the top coat. So the top coat comes after everything. That's your final step, no matter what you're using. I'm doing everything you said, but after I take my nails out of my lamp, some parts of my nails don't have builder on them. I think I answered that earlier. It could be shrinking. OK, so an extra coat would be key and just double check your prep. I know you say you're doing everything, but maybe you need a rougher file for your prep. Maybe you need to wipe the skin around the nail with acetone and maybe you actually need the primer. So just double check that. Why are you putting the builder gel on? top instead of underneath the color again it's it's total preference so that is a great way to use it in a really thin way just to add a little bit of strength you can apply it over the top of the builder gel like i have here you can apply color over that if you want to it's just different methods from different brands um would you do builder gel on the base and on top of color on the same nail would you build a gel on the base? I wouldn't do it on, I wouldn't do it. In, I wouldn't sandwich it in. I would do it either or. That would be my personal preference. Just in terms of control, it's much easier if you keep it on one layer, whether it's underneath or over the top. Um, my nails are only lifting after one day. I hope I answered that. Prep, prep, prep. Um, don't wash your hands. Use acetone. No hand lotion, no oil until the final, final step. That would be my advice for you. Why use a gel color before the builder gel? Is it not easier for refills to build and then polish? Yes, if you're doing refills, it is. You, you might find with this that because you're working so thinly with it, that it's almost as easy to just file it off and start again in terms of freshness. And if you're swapping out your color, if you're repairing a nail, how would you do the color coat? So I repair the nail and then I would add the color and then do a thin layer of the clear builder on top. That would be how I would do it. Um, can you build your nail with a form with the clear gel? Yes, you can. I find the clear gel a little bit runnier. So just bear that in mind that when you're working with it to extend or build the nail out, that it is a little bit, um, you have to work a little bit faster with it. That's what I would say. Um, when fixing the broken nail with the clear builder gel, should I use the builder gel to form the length file, then apply the base and color. Yes, but you don't need to apply the base. So once the base is on your natural nail for you to build out the extension, don't need to do base again. You can go in with a builder gel or straight in with your color if you're happy with the smoothness. How much does a builder gel cost from 40 Day Maddie? That's a fantastic question. For some reason, it has gone completely out of my head. But whatever the price you see on the website, don't forget you can use my code PAMELA12 and that will get you 12% off. But I'm sorry, I don't have that in my head right now. I'm so sorry. Um, no wipe top coat separates and I don't understand why I'm not disturbing the inhibition layer. Oh, that's very strange. I definitely get in touch with 14 Day Maddie. It shouldn't do that. And it doesn't for me. Um, I've got three different ones on the go at the minute and it hasn't done that for me so there may be something wrong there and um, definitely get in touch with the guys can you add gel polish color over a layer of builder yes do you wipe the builder layer with acetone for color no because it gives you that nice sticky layer so unless you've made a mistake and you need to file and shape the mistake away before you go in with the color 
you can just go straight in with your color if you're happy with the finish of the of the builder gel should you cut your cuticles I, I kind of went on a rant about this the last time so I'm sorry if some people have overlapped but I personally feel like you shouldn't cut your cuticles. However, there are some fantastic tools that 14 Day Manicure have. If you do have the likes of a hangnail, they're gorgeous implements actually. But I personally prefer to use a cuticle exfoliator, which will gently tame the cuticle. Now, look, if you do have a hangnail, I don't because I'm a good girl with my cuticle oil. But I personally prefer not to trim because, again, these are dangerous tools, even in skilled hands. And as I mentioned at the beginning, your nail is formed back here. It's called your matrix. And the cuticle is providing a watertight seal there, okay? So if you're just nipping away, you can cause bacteria to get in there and it can be quite dangerous. So I tend to not. I keep my, my tools purely for hangnails. Um, will I automatically be sent out a copy? Yes, you will. Um, which, can you explain the steps for extending the nail with the clear builder gel and gel color which would you do first extend the nails it's almost like you're sticking on a tip extend that nail first file if you have to and then go in with your color or if you're really happy and you're flawlessly applied your gel builder go straight in with your color hopefully that helped and um, what was your instagram address as it was said so quickly i'm sorry i talk so fast it's pamela underscore laird but if you go on to 14 day manicures um instagram you'll see me there um, oh, thank you very much. A few people had to jump off. Sorry, I'm still talking and we're an hour and 15 minutes in. Should you give your nails a break from gel builder after a few applications? Um, you can do. Look, I unless you're going to give yourself a three month break, it takes three months for the nail to fully regrow. So if you're just giving yourself a two week break, you're probably getting this much new regrowth. And I just don't see the point in that. So personally, if you've got weak papery nails like me, I keep gel builder on all the time or gel polish because I like to do my nails. I like my nails to look good. If I'm doing a break, it'd want to be three months to make it worthwhile to get a full new nail regrowth. If you're not going to commit to that, don't do, don't give yourself a break. There's no need. You're applying it to new nail every time. So you're not over applying it onto natural nails. You're not, once you're following all the steps properly, you're not damaging your natural nails. And if you don't have good natural nails, you probably never will. So having gel builder on all the time will just keep them strong and keep them healthy looking and stop them from breaking, which to me is key. I hate when my nails break. Um, any tips to prevent nails breaking halfway down? Remember the way I put the little product into the center? If they're breaking halfway down, it's probably because they're too flat and you need to add a bit of strength here. So pop your builder gel on either after your color or on its own. Um, rose pink. Could you mention rose or pink is similar to the color you used as the color you used is sold out? Apologies. Color I used, the closest one, which is actually one of my favorites, is Pastel Princess this one here stunning it's like a milky pink it's actually what i've got on this hand very very similar so pastel princess yeah pastel princess is my next favorite or pink lemonade they're the two i use all the time recently started using 40 day manny but in removing coats i've really thinned out my nail wall to the point that it's like paper is it okay to apply builder gel it is okay to apply builder gel. Take all the length out of your nails, take the pressure off, keep them nice and short and add the builder gel. It will help. Um, oh, my light's gone. Sorry, guys. You'll have to see me in the dark now. Um, is there a reason builder gels are pink and clear in color? Purely just for the healthy look, but there are some fantastic um, bridal shades in a more beige tone, in a white tone. Generally, you don't have builder gels in strong colors because it can be hard to work with. So they keep the colors in the thinner formulas like the um, color coats. Um, sorry. Okay, there, there's they've sold out. Sorry, guys, they just keep selling out. So Pink Lemonade and Pastel Princess and Peachy Keen, I think is the other one that I love. Yeah, Peachy Keen. They're all very similar um, and use them all, interchange them. Um, if you're doing chrome nails, would you do the chrome effect over gel polish and then put the builder gel over it or do the builder gel first? Chrome effect last always. That would be my advice. Um, so finish with your chrome effect. Can forms be used for shorter nails to give length? Yes, they can. Do you know when the flexi jelly nails will be in stock? I don't, but I'm dying for them to be in stock. So keep an eye out. Uh, there's a cuticle exfoliator on the 14 day manicure website that I recommend. Somebody's just asked which one. Thank you so much. A lot of people had to go. Thank you so much. Um, 
so the builder gel someone's asked will it benefit your natural nail if you use the color first yes because it's the strength it's not got penetrating ingredients that are benefiting the nail it's the strength and flexibility that it adds to the nail that benefit the nail um i bought the builder gel after your last master class and my nails are great three weeks tomorrow i love to hear that thanks melissa um okay i've answered all the questions and i've talked at you enough but again my dms are open if there's anything i haven't answered again my code is pamela12 if you want to grab anything on the website i will recap quickly the colors that i would go for are pastel princess and um, builder gel if you like that pinky color that's on this hand or peachy keen if you like them a little bit more pink there's also pink lemonade which is one of my favorites anyway guys have a fantastic evening i'm sorry that i ran over time but this will be available to catch up on if you need to look back and um, hope you all have a fantastic week and thanks again for joining me